I saw that Anastasia is on Disney Plus now, so it's an official Disney Princess movie. And I'm reminded of a question that arose a few years ago. Should we watch this movie? After all, we now know exactly what happened to Grand Duchess Anastasia. She was murdered alongside her parents, just like we thought. The Red Army simply split up the bodies to make it harder to identify the mass grave. All the women who pretended to be Anastasia were fake. It was never real. Then, there are other problems, like Rasputin, best described as a mad hermit, being portrayed as a warlock who sold his soul for power and is now a vengeful revenant. Even Rasputin's prophecy that the royal family killed him, that they would lose their throne, shouldn't have too much weight as far as mysticism is concerned. After all, Bismarck's prediction that the Great European War would come from some damned foolish thing in the Balkans was more accurate and more specific. However, it's considered wisdom and experience, not magic. Now, I generally prefer historical fiction to be accurate, portraying what appears to be a factual account of something we know not to have happened should be anathema. However, there's something that draws me to forgive this movie. The magic. I know, I know, hear me out. However, the magic is such a core part of this film that the story cannot readily be confused with truth. Similarly, we know that George Washington, Richard the Lionheart, and Lorenzo Medici didn't work with magic assassins who could see through walls. We know that the Boston Tea Party didn't happen because a robot, space marine, and schoolboy gave the Founding Fathers coffee. We know a trio of angels didn't guide Einstein in his final days. However, we can enjoy and even learn from these fictionalized portrayals because any normal viewer can separate the clearly supernatural situations from reality and glean some measure, or at least an impression, of truth. When historical fiction is more realistic, we have to be stricter. If there are not clearly fictionalized elements, taking major deviations runs the risk of misleading. I've mentioned the story of Mozart and Soleri before. The play, and especially the movie Amadeus, has slandered poor Soleri for over a century. But because it's so omnipresent, and there's no counterpoint in major pop culture, people assume that it's generally true. On the other hand, movies don't have to be completely accurate. Take Titanic. That movie took a few real people and kind of dragged their names through the mud. A heroic first officer who went down with the ship was shown committing suicide after taking bribes and killing a man. A woman who inspired others and pulled people out of the water was shown causing a panic until a gun was pointed into her face. On the other hand, the many poignant moments as musicians played their last refrain, how the richest man in the world went down with the ship, and the general course of the story follows reality close enough that you can learn from it, despite the clearly fictionalized love story. On the other hand, there are some stories I just cannot defend even when they include explicitly supernatural elements. The most egregious of these is the Disney film Pocahontas. Yeah, it's got a talking tree that provides magic translation and funny animal companions. However, essentially every single verifiable fact in this movie is wrong. Yes, a man named John Smith went to America and... Pocahontas was the daughter of a Powhatan chieftain who saved his life when he was about to be executed. However, Ratcliffe wasn't a gold-obsessed villain, but a ship captain who was arguably one of the better people present. Smith and Pocahontas were never in love. She was still a child. In at least one of the versions of the story that Smith told, it's clear that her saving him was purely ceremonial. And, of course, there wasn't active peace between the civilizations after the incident, but it swiftly devolved into war and conquest. 
a child coming out of this movie knows actively less than when they came in, since they now know things that just ain't so. Even if you separate the clearly fictional magical engine and funny animal tropes, what remains is just wrong. There is no wheat to separate from the chaff. And yet, it's not so obviously fictional that the viewer will write it off completely. My daughter has never seen this movie, and I never intend for her to see it. Coming back to Anastasia, we know the Russian Revolution didn't happen because of a magic curse. The villainization of Rasputin is so over the top, we know it's not true. However, it does provide a footprint for understanding the truth. My daughter knew the story of the Russian Revolution from a, a young age because of this story. After seeing it, she turned to me and asked what really happened, which provided the background for me to show her the execution scene from Nicholas and Alexandra, and explain why you never want to be a princess. Anastasia also has implications of the post-revolution Russian suffering, the encroachment on liberties, and everyone wanting to get out. Even if they were contractually forbidden from mentioning communism, the Red Army, or even properly naming Leningrad. As a closing point, let's not forget that the movie occurred before we knew beyond any doubt what happened to the potential Tsarina and it instead presents an alternate history of what might have happened. It's speculative fiction, and clearly presents itself as a magical, fictional account that won't be readily confused with reality. So we can enjoy it without too much worry about misleading potential viewers. Thanks for listening, y'all.